found it in a nutshell and found myself a king of infinite space. That was one of the things that Hamlet said in the play. Escher, like Hamlet, was fascinated by the idea of infinity, trying to bound infinity in a nutshell. And the pictures that he saw of mine gave him exactly that right flavor. And with that hint, he drew a picture called Circle Limit One. This was only a first attempt, and he was not very well satisfied with it. And he wanted me to tell him more about hyperbolic geometry, in which the points infinitely far away in the hyperbolic plane are thought of as being represented by a circle, and everything inside the circle is the hyperbolic world. The effect is then that shapes are represented truly, angles are represented without distortion, but distances become distorted. The closer one gets to the circumference, the greater is the distortion. So the points on the circumference are to be thought of as being infinitely far away. French mathematician Poincaré described a very clever model for this kind of geometry, and in that way he was able to see that all these black and white triangles are really the same size when they move further away, even though they don't seem to be. It's analogous to the situation on a sphere, where if this is a picture of the sphere, you see that the triangles in the middle seem to be larger than those near the circumference, but that is only perspective foreshortening. These on the sphere are all the same size. Similarly, in the hyperbolic plane, these triangles are to be thought of as being all the same size. And so it is when he made the green fish is going this way, the yellow fish is going this way, and so on. And this he found a very pleasing pattern, as indeed it is. And the symmetry of it is very interesting because, as a matter of fact, there are points of various kinds that be can be distinguished in the figure. For instance, the points where two yellow fins and two green fins come together, and other points where four fins come together, are all arranged in a very symmetrical fashion. The point in the middle where two yellow and two green fins come together is not essentially different from other points such as this where two green and two blue come together and this where two blue and two yellow and so on. Altogether an octagon of such points. And each side of that octagon forms with the center of the whole figure a triangle which, from the hyperbolic standpoint, is equilateral. So Escher, in effect, saw how the hyperbolic plane could be tessellated with equilateral triangles meeting eight at each corner. One way to bring infinity to finite terms is by the transformation called inversion. Inversion in a circle whereby a point outside the circle is transformed into a point inside so that it is on the same diameter but the distance from the center is the reciprocal of the distance to the original point. In this way, if a point moves outside the circle, the inverse point moves inside, and even if the point moves infinitely far away, its image is still inside the circle, 
as the point moves farther and farther away, the image point gets closer and closer to the center. And so, if one considers the important curve called an equiangular spiral, which is a curve that goes round and round, going farther and farther from the center, or in the opposite direction, gets closer and closer to the center, that curve inverted in a circle, say a circle in this position, will become a new kind of spiral with its pole at the inverse of the original pole and then of course going the opposite way round but the part that goes to infinity makes a second pole at the center and so you have this curious effect of a curve that has two poles and that is the curve which Escher used in his whirlpool are in the cemetery of the town of Utrecht, the site of Escher's only fresco, 